Parker Kligerman announces he will step away from full-time driving at the end of the 2024 season. Who replaces him at Big Machine? Could we see McLaren and NASCAR at some point in the future? And we're going to talk tires. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. The biggest story to come out of Thursday will absolutely be Parker Kligerman announcing on his podcast, The Money Lap. Go ahead and subscribe to that. They do a fantastic job, he and Landon Castle, that he will be stepping away from full time racing at the end of the 2024 season and will pursue the other, you know, avenues of life after racing, continuing to do his TV stuff as well as other things that go along with it. Kligerman on his podcast basically said that he went for a run back at Sonoma in June and he said he got to the top of a mountain, was overlooking San Francisco, and he thought to himself, yeah, I'm good. And then decided that he would not pursue full-time driving after this season. He said his ultimate goal was, of course, to end up in the NASCAR Cup Series, but that just probably was never going to happen uh, at this level and at this stage of his career. So he decided to call it quits on full-time driving. He has had a really good run with Big Machine Racing. This is his second season with the team. And then 58 starts together. They have 30 top 10 finishes, 12 top fives. They still don't have that coveted win. Big Machine, of course, does have one win with Tyler Reddick uh, back in 2022 at Texas, but they don't have it with Parker Kligerman yet. And it's not for a lack of trying. They've been really close multiple times. I mean, this past weekend in Atlanta, they had a shot. Before that in Daytona, they had a shot. They've had good runs. They've had second place finishes. They just need to get over that hump like a Sheldon Creed and finally, you know, knock that off, put the notch in the belt, as some like to say, and claim that first win. Now, he still has an opportunity to do that before the end of the season. He currently sits 11th in points in a playoff spot. Uh, last year, he finished 10th in the points for the team. And overall, they've had a successful relationship together. But for Parker, you know, calling it quits at the end of the year just probably made sense for him and at this stage of his life. And he's had a heck of a NASCAR career at this point. He's one of those drive development drivers that maybe just got lost in the fray a little bit. And that's super unfortunate because he's a guy that can definitely wheel a race car. He finished second for Cunningham in the Arca Series back in 2009 when the Arca Series actually meant something and it was actually competitive. And that was impressive. And then you felt like, okay, he's going to be on this Penske path uh, in terms of driver development. And then just got a bit locked. He did some Xfinity stuff for Penske. Uh, he went over and did trucks for Brad Keselowski Racing, got bounced out of there um, after, what, halfway through his second year. Goes over to Red Horse, gets a win at Talladega after getting let go from BKR. Ultimately picked up three wins in the truck series, two for Henderson, one for Red Horse. And he's done a really good job of being a guy that like you can depend on to put in your race car and usually bring it home pretty safe uh, more often than not. But he's just one of those guys that I think never got the opportunity he probably deserved. He's a guy that doesn't bring funding along with him, or at least not a lot of it, if any at all. He's a guy that has to be hired to drive. And in an era that we just have been going through where you, you have a ton of kids and guys bringing money, the place for a Parker Kligerman just never really was there. So he will not be back at Big Machine in 2024. Who could replace him over there? I would go ahead and probably bank on Nick Sanchez being in that car next season. Uh, so far, undefeated in terms of silly season predictions. I'm going with Nick Sanchez here. Not That's not a wild prediction. I, of course, talk to people and would expect to see Nick Sanchez in that car next season. He did make uh, five starts for the team back in 2022, has a best finish with them of seventh in Martinsville. He's a guy that has shown a lot of progress over the last two years in the truck series. He has two wins in the truck series this year, season opener at Daytona, as well as Charlotte back in May. Uh, he's definitely a title contender he's probably what second or, th or third or fourth in terms of the hierarchy of the truck series right now behind Corey Heim Christian Eck is and then you know he and Ty Majeski probably battling out there for third and fourth uh super formidable race car driver um expect Rev Racing to be involved in this probably a little bit uh with it but Nick Sanchez expect him to move up to the Xfinity series next year and Overall, I think that's a good replacement for Parker Kligerman. Uh, Sanchez is a guy that has shown speed, uh, is fearless behind the wheel, fearless in the face of Matt Crafton. So he's not he's not afraid to go out there and bang fenders um, or throw down behind a hauler as well. So Nick, Shan Nick Sanchez, expect him to uh, end up in the 48 car next year in the Xfinity series, not Alex Bowman. He's not going to the 48 Xfinity car. Today's video is sponsored by Driven Sunglasses. Head over to drivensunglasses.com today. Use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. 
Moving on to McLaren. Could we see McLaren on the NASCAR grid sometime in the future? Zach Brown, CEO of McLaren, not the fried chicken guy, was on the Dale Jr. download uh, this week. Uh, he was in town, of course, to announce the Kyle Larson double again in 2025. And he went on the download and he said that don't expect McLaren to ever run a full NASCAR Cup Series season. He says that's just too much of a commitment for them. Uh, that's a big undertaking. And that makes sense, right? They're based out of the UK. Uh, they could, you know, of course, you know, do something like that. They've joined the IndyCar series full time here domestically in the United States, but don't expect them full time in the Cup Series. He did say, however, he could see them potentially fielding a car in the Daytona 500 someday. And he said he'd like to partner with Rick Hendrick and Hendrick Motorsports to do that, because, of course, why would you not want to do that? Uh, it'd be really fun to see them send over their number one driver and Oscar Piastri to come drive that race car. Uh, that would certainly make headlines around the world. Uh, but McLaren coming to NASCAR would be entertaining. Of course, McLaren and Hendrick Motorsports do have a history of partnerships together starting this year in 2024 when they fielded uh, Kyle Larson in the 2024 Indianapolis 500. Uh, a successful program there. Obviously, an 18th place finish isn't what they wanted, but he was running top five before that speeding penalty. They also announced this week that they will once again partner together to field Kyle Larson in the 2025 Indianapolis 500, although the Coke 600 remains the priority. That is the priority. They could not stress that enough, that they will be in Charlotte for the start of the NASCAR race, regardless of what's happening in Indianapolis. But for Zach Brown, he did say that 2019 at Indianapolis, that really scarred him when they failed to make the race with Fernando Alonso, uh, a wake up call, a shock, embarrassment, whatever you want to say about it. They got knocked out of the Indianapolis 500 by the little team that could. Hunko's racing with Kyle Kaiser behind the wheel, knocking out McLaren and Fernando Alon Alonso, behemoths of the sport. Imagine if BJ McLeod just knocks McLaren out of the Daytona 500 in the duels and passes them on the last lap, something like that happening. That would be uh, absolutely bananas to see something like that go 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 down with the 78 car just all black no sponsors on it knocking out mclaren who would have an abundance of sponsorship on the side because if zach brown's good at one thing it's selling sponsorship that man can put sponsors on a race car mclaren looks like a nascar cup car back in the 90s with all the contingency sponsors on it mclaren's f1 car's got little stickers anywhere and everywhere Hey, are you interested in a three inch by two inch piece of the engine cover on this car? Well, yeah, yes, I am. Great. Let's slap a sticker on there. Okay, let's go ahead and sell that four inch by five inch piece over here. They will sell anything on that race car and good for them. They got money coming in. So will we see McLaren in NASCAR? Uh, not full time, but it would be cool to see them in the Daytona 500, well, you know, with a joint, you know, entry with Hendrick Motorsports. Obviously, it would have to be McLaren entering the car. Hendrick Motorsports could prepare the car for them. Uh, or they could buy all their stuff and set up from Hendrick, but Hendrick can't field a fifth car, obviously, um, as everybody knows. All right, moving on to the last topic of the day. That is tires, not a tire like this. This has tread on it. This is a good winter tire for the Blackwing. It was currently sitting around in the garage. I felt like it might be a good thing to bring it upstairs to the office to use it as a prop. And honestly, got a lot of great tread on it. Uh, it probably has... Mm, 2,000 miles on it, maybe. Uh, don't really drive that car in the winter too often. But speaking of tires, this weekend at Watkins Glen, the NASCAR Cup Series cars have a new tire, and Goodyear in their tire notes for the weekend expects a three-second falloff over the course of a run for that, which is exactly what we've been asking for. We need tire falloff. It creates for better racing. Get those Fred Flintstone specials out of here. Get us a tire that wears. Goodyear is finally doing that, and it could kind of shake up the strategy for the Cup race on Sunday because now, typically with Watkins Glen, you would pit this race backwards. As soon as your fuel window opens, you pit because typically your tires are just never going to wear out. There's not that much of a difference in terms of new tires uh, versus scuff tires or you know whatever. So you're just really pitting for the fuel at this point to make sure you can make it to the end. Well, now you're also going to take tires into, uh, into account here and it introduces a new variable. And is it going to do anything? Uh, some people that, that I've talked to think that maybe it could add an extra stop, but if there's a late race caution, things are going to get very chaotic because you're going to want new tires on your race car. Uh, obviously, when they did the first test here, they said it was like a six second fall off over the course of a run. That's super dramatic. What are we, Bristol back in the springtime? 
which we'll get to that in a second. Uh, three seconds is pretty good. I'm interested to see how it goes. Of course, the Cup Series team, um, they have 40 minutes of practice on sa Saturday. Yes, on Saturday uh, to see how all of this will go. Remember, Juan Montoya is in this race as well. Go ahead and make your stupid jet dryer jokes uh, now. Also, speaking of tires, Bristol will have the same tire for the night race as it did for the spring race of when we had absolute chaos, a banger of a race when those tires started to wear out super fast. NASCAR will apply the resin after the truck series race on Thursday. Yeah, could get chaotic. I'm very interested to see what happens. As I've said before, NASCAR and Goodyear were able to recreate the same issue that happened back in the springtime in the summer tire test there. So it's not dependent on ambient air temperature could be for a chaotic Bristol night race. Moving on to Martinsville. Martinsville in the next gen era, in the gen seven era, has been absolute doldrum. It will put you to sleep faster than Lord of the Rings. However, things maybe just changed a little bit because Bob Pockers reported that Goodyear will be bringing the option tire, the soft tire that we've seen at Richmond and back at what, North Wilkesboro or whatever it was. Uh, they'll bring, bring, be bringing that softer tire to Martinsville as the right side tire. What's going on the left side tires? An even softer tire than that one. That is fantastic news because those tires that we had at Martinsville just did not wear. Although the tires they put on at Martinsville at the end of last year in the fall race, they had a thicker tread on them. They laid down a lot more rubber, but you really didn't have that tire fall off that we were looking for. Now, looks like we're going to get that. That is a good thing. I'm excited that NASCAR and Goodyear are taking these risks. They're trying something out. It's the easiest way to try to fix racing on short tracks right now, other than a complete overhaul of the car, which just is not happening anytime soon. We're not getting more horsepower. Suits hate horsepower, as we've talked about a bunch of times, but softer tires could definitely be the answer. So I'm excited about that. Take it to Phoenix as well. As much as Christopher Bell wanted to whine and complain about that, like he's Chandler Smith, does not matter. Bring that soft tire to the championship race. Race, spice things up. We want to see an entertaining championship race, not a follow the leader procession like it's Formula One at basically any track that they race at most of the time. So excited about the tires. Let me know in the comments what you think about Parker, his re possible replacement, McLaren potentially coming to NASCAR just for the 500 and the tire issue. I'm going to take this tire back out to the garage because yeah, my office now smells like tires. Fantastic. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.